Praise the Lord from Pastor Strader at Lighthouse Church. Thanks for connecting with us through our podcast. Our prayer is that it's a blessing to you as we try to reach, equip, and mobilize Jesus' name disciples in Apache Junction, Arizona, and the surrounding region. Enjoy today's podcast and come back often. God bless you. We love you. turn with me tonight to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 30. Hallelujah. Keep playing if you would, sister. I like it. Sisters. When I say sister, I mean sisters. Praise God. Can we just lift our hands real quick and let's love the Lord. Oh, let's love him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I love you, God. In preparation for tonight, God has placed a couple people, a few people on my heart. I'm not one to call people out unless God just directly tells me, and so I don't intend to do that. But I will say that I believe that this is for our church. I know Vision Sunday is next week, but I I just, God got a hold of my spirit. So I think this will probably flow in a similar vein. And uh, I think the word of God is for several people in here even those that God didn't specifically tell me about. Amen. But I want to teach in just a moment we're going to read. My title is Pursue and Recover All. You'll understand in just a moment. And it came to pass, 1 Samuel 30, verse 1. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein they slew not any either great or small but carried them away and went on their way so David and his men came to the city and was burned it was burned with fire And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. David's two wives were taken captives. I've tried to pronounce these names correctly. But they captured his wives. And David was greatly distressed. For the people spake of stoning him. Notice his very own people. If you had if you had read previous verses, they were saying, Saul has slew his thousands, and David his tens thousands, tens of thousands. They were singing his praises. But now they want to stone David. David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. David encouraged himself. And David said to Abathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abathar brought thither the ephod of David. And David inquired, everybody say he inquired, at the Lord saying, shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered to him, pursue. For thou shalt surely overtake them. And without fail, recover Oh. I feel those that God spoke to me are already feeling it right now in the spirit the word 
that God has for this church. Pursue and recover all. Would you put your Bibles down and lift both of your hands one more time before heaven? And I want us to worship. I know we normally pray, but I want us to worship God tonight. Man, you may be seated unless you are a man that were here when you were here yesterday. I want you to stand. If you are a man and you were here yesterday, amen. We had so many, a couple that are not here tonight that were there working last night, and we had Sister Marianne, Sister Rao. I hope I didn't forget anybody pr- prepare breakfast for us. Amen. Can we give our men a hand clap of appreciation? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, men, for your sacrifice of coming. And, and I want to also say thank you to this great church for being such great hosts to so many new people this morning. And uh, I know many of you lost your seats, <laughs> but I didn't hear, if you did, maybe I just didn't hear it, but I didn't hear one complaint. Amen. And I thank you for that. And uh, it was a little bit different how we, how we operated, but the way that the family saw it, Sister Emily and Brother Hector, they said, I want, oh, we want our family at least one opportunity to hear the word of God. Amen. And so we, we, we conned them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Amen. But uh, I, th- I appreciate this great church for preparing and, and, and serving them. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Pursue and recover all. David is stuck between a rock and a hard place in our passage tonight. And uh, he has several impossible choices that confront him in, in the reading. As a young boy, challenged and intimidated Israel and its army. He was then hailed a hero by his people. This led to David being highly regarded by those around him who danced and sang about him. We see that in the 18th chapter of 1 Samuel and 7. Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. In spite of great adversity, David was a source of inspiration for so many people of Israel. In our passage tonight, he was about to face an extremely challenging situation. David was going to be the next king and Saul felt threatened by him. Consequently, he was willing to kill David to remain in power and Saul had led the Israelites to consider David as their enemy. And The situation was so dire that David decided to hide among the Philistines. And in this passage, the Philistine army is marching ahead and and David and his, and for this previous chapter, David and his men were behind Achish, the king of the Philistines. And David's presence among these soldiers, you can read it. I didn't want to read all both chapters, but you can read it. You can find that David's presence among these soldiers raised skepticism. They didn't want David and the army with them. He was the one whom uh, the Israelites sang about and danced about. Therefore, they did not trust David. And they asked David, they told David, you need to go back home. To Ziklag. You need to go back home. We don't want you to fight with us. Because they were afraid of all that they had heard. And so David and the army returned to Ziklag. However, something unexpected happened while they were gone. Shortly after he was told to return home to Ziklag, David was shocked to discover that something far more serious had occurred. The Amalekites had come and taken 
what they desired and they burned the city while he and his men were away and, and David and his men had not only lost their homes and their possessions, but they took their wives and they took their children. They came to back to their home city with nothing. Everything was gone. We're not talking about just any man, but we're talking about the man after God's own heart. We're not talking about just some unruly person and yes David did his unruly things but David was loved of God David was a man of God he knew the heart of God we're not talking about just any any person off of any any place you can just pull that doesn't know God doesn't love him but we're talking about the David and here David finds his wives are gone his children is gone and all the wives and the children of this army is gone and their city is burned. They have nothing left. They are deeply grieved, the Bible says. And according to the Bible, they lifted up their voice and they wept until they had no more power to weep. Can I tell you today, I don't know if you've ever been there. Maybe, maybe it's just me, but I seriously doubt it that there are some times in life that the things that life bring us that sometimes we just have to lift up our voice and weep. That is not a sign of weakness. That is a sign of great strength and, and recover. A great strength of recovering when we begin to lift up our voice and weep. They wept so much until they had no more power to weep. And David then found himself in an even more precarious situation. Many people suffered substantial losses under that leadership there at Ziklag, their, their, their wives are gone. Their children are gone. And guess who they're going to blame? David. Because David, you took us to the Philistines to hide. You, you led us to there and then they sent us back. If we had just stayed here, we would have been here to defend ourselves. But now our wives are gone and our children are gone. And we don't know if they're alive or dead or they're gone. He stole from us and so... David in verse 6 of chapter 30 was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him, the very people that were patting him on the back, the very people that were dancing and shouting, oh, David is great, David is awesome, is the same men that is now saying let's stone the man because the soul of the people was grieved and every man for his sons and for his daughters and Saul, here we find David, Saul, and the Israelites want him dead. We find David now, the Philistines don't trust him. They, want, they don't want any part of him. And then we find that the Amalekites robbed David and all of his army and took his family and his possessions. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but I really felt that there was some people here tonight that, the, that there has been some things that you have lost. You have come back to a situation and it seems like you've really made no progress and in some cases there has been a loss of progress. There has been a, 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 a thief that has come in, if you will, and has stolen some things. I think some of those things are some joy and some peace and I think some of those things are some lost loved ones that, that were in the church and you come back now and you, you come back with less people, less loved ones and, and now they're out serving the, this world and the, and the king of this world, if you will. But, but you, now you've just in a situation where you've lost some things. You find yourself in a distressed situation, perhaps like David and the men were in. Perhaps you're somebody that's experiencing financial stress. Perhaps you find yourself in a situation where you're dealing with forces beyond your direct control that have disrupted your life. Perhaps you're dealing with situations and forces that you could control, but now you're dealing with the aftermath of those actions. I believe that there have been some jobs that have been lost. I believe there's some health that has been attacked. I believe there's been some anxiety and some fears and some depression that has been trying to attack your mind. I believe there's some strength that has been siphoned away from some people. But God has a word of the Lord for the church tonight. And the word is pursue. And the word is to pursue. You've been questioning God. Oh Lord, what do I do? And I've come to with the word from the Lord today. 
today. Now is not the hour to, sw to wallow in your self-pity. Now is not the time to kick back your feet. But now is the time to pick up your sword. Now is the time to pick up more strength in an altar and pursue. For God is about to recover what you have lost. Oh, let's lift our hands tonight. Let's worship him right now. I don't know what it is that you've lost. Maybe you feel like you've lost a lot of time and you can't recover that time. Maybe, maybe you've lost some money and you, you're never going to recover that money. Maybe you've lost some friends along the way and you're not going to be able to recover those friends. Maybe, maybe you look back and you think, dear God, I've, I've missed out on that Bible study. I've never, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I, I think maybe sometimes we look back and we think, oh Lord, what have I ever, what have I done this past year? What have I done the past three years? What have I done the past five years? and you look back and you look at your loved ones and they're no longer serving God and I'm going to tell you what, it breaks your heart. I know of an evangelist right now I know he's a young man. He's been, he's preached in this pulpit, but he stayed with his pastor for over six, I think it was six years or five years. And he felt a call to evangelize on year two of him serving as a youth pastor. And he desired to go. He desired, he had a call to go preach and to evangelize. But his pastor said, I want you to stay right here. Four years passed and he still is there under his pastor serving faithfully until one day his pastor came and he said, I have a word of the Lord. It's time for you to evangelize. Evangelize. He preached here in this pulpit and I went to eat with him after servicing. I, if God spoke to me, ever spoke to me, I heard the word of the Lord. God told me and I told him that what you feel you have lost the past six years and what would have taken 10 years for you to fulfill if you would have disobeyed, if you would have left the covering of your pastor, God will now recover in, in a small amount of time what you feel you have lost. What, has, what you thought would take you 10 years will now only take you a year or two and now that young man is preaching revivals his schedule is booked he's got 10, 20, 30, 40, 60 people receiving the Holy Ghost every weekend I've come to preach to somebody tonight you've got to pursue you've got to pursue for God is about to recover it all <laughs> David could have wallowed in his distress he could have blamed Saul. He could have said, look what Saul's done to me. Look where Saul has put me. Look where I'm at now because I didn't do what I felt I should do or what I wanted to do. I, I had an opportunity to kill him. I had an opportunity to take advantage of him. I had all the favor of the people. I could have undermined him, but here I am. He could have blamed him, but he did not blame Saul. Here he is on the verge of death, being wanting to be stoned by the very men that were behind him one second before and now that they see all of this distress now they want his life I've come to tell somebody you may have a situation where it seems like everybody is against you but I've come to rebuke that spirit tonight that this church is behind you we are in your corner it is the enemy it is the, it is the will of the enemy to try to get you to think that the church is against you but I've come to tell you tonight that is not the will of God that is not the will of God we are for you. He could have wallowed in his distress. He could have whined and complained. He could have, he could have, he could have done all kinds of things. He could have been, he could have caused judgment on people. He could, I don't know, he could have done so many things and probably had a great lot of justification of it. Could have said, you know what? I'm through. I'm done with this situation. I'm going, I'm leaving. He could have just tucked his tail and ran. He could have done a lot of different things. He could have, he could have, he could have, he could have even taken his lives into his own hands if he wanted to. I mean, David was a warrior, folks. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. David encouraged himself in the Lord. Ah, oh, but to sorry, it's all about.
There's somebody, there's several people here. You need to encourage yourself in the Lord. I, I, I've been there because I, I'm, t- I'm telling you from experience because I've been there and I know several of you have as well. If Maybe all of you, but there are so many times where you feel like, you know, I wish that one person would just come lay hands on me. I, I wish they would come and pray for me. I wish somebody would, I wish they'd pick up the phone and give me a word of God. I wish somebody would come and give me a fresh word. I wish somebody would just come and pray and, oh, we could, the list could go on and on. We want to look at everybody else and say, well, how can, how can the pastor fix it? How can the leadership fix it? How can the word fix it? How can this fix it? And God is saying, looking at us and saying, will you not encourage yourself in me? Encourage yourself in the Lord. Well, I don't have the strength. Well, somewhere along the way, David mustered up enough strength in his body. He could have used his strength to leave. He could have used his strength to, to, to t- duck tail and run. But instead, he used every strength that he had left. He, By all means, he had lost his wives and his children. He was weeping. He was hurting as well. But here David is. He goes before the Lord and he encourages himself. I begin to look. What does it mean that he encouraged himself? Himself. What did he do? This is what it means when he encouraged himself. But he began to remember back at all the things that God had done. And he remembers back probably at chapter 17 of 1 Samuel verse 37 when David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. I believe he began to talk to himself. He said, if God did it for me back then, God is gonna do it for me now. I'm going to seek after the Lord. I believe that whenever David began to encourage himself in the Lord, that's when some of these psalms were written. When Psalms 18 and 1, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the name of the Lord who is worthy to be praised so shall I be saved from mine enemies I believe David began to praise as David always would on the hill of that mountain I believe he began to lift up his voice I believe in his great distress instead of doing something that the flesh wanted to do he began to make psalms like 59 and 16 but I will sing I will sing of thy power yea I will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning for thou hast been my defense and my refuge in the day of my trouble. Unto thee, oh my strength, will I sing for God is my defense and the God of my mercy. Sometimes church, I know you, you, you may not be the kind to lift up your voice. I don't know, I don't I, I, I gotta be careful. You may not be, it may be different for you. It may be backwards for you to lift up your voice and to jump and to shout and, and to do something that you don't typically do. But I've come to tell you, David, when he encouraged himself in the Lord, he didn't just sit on a pew somewhere. He didn't just sit on a seat somewhere. But I believe he found an old fashioned prayer closet, if you will, like he had while he was watching the sheep on the backside of the mountain. And he began to sing praise is unto God. I believe he began to praise the Lord. I believe he began to remember back of all the things that God has done and he began to say something kind of like this if you will. Oh if he was for me then I know he'll be for me now. (laughs) But after he worshipped and after he sang and after he remembered all the things that God had done the Bible says that David prayed. And David, he inquired of the Lord saying, shall I pursue after this troop and shall I overtake it? I believe David learned a very important a, a, a very important element of ministry. He learned something so important and that was, I'm not going to move until I hear the word of God. I'm not going to do something until I have full confidence in the word of God. We need a good dose of that. 
We need a good dose of that. I'm not going to do anything until I hear the word of the Lord because I know that my flesh may want one thing, but God is saying not now. And here all the while I'm thinking, dear Lord, I'm losing time. The clock is ticking. What is going to happen? But what God is trying to tell this church is if you will just remain faithful, if you'll just remain submitted to God, if you'll just remain submitted to the word of the Lord, what may have taken you a decade to accomplish, God is about to expedite it if you will just pursue uh, after the will of God uh, if you will just run after the will of God if you will seek first if you will seek first the kingdom of God he's going to recover it all I wish we would stand on our feet right now I'm asking you to stand on your feet and lift up your hands unto the Lord Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You may be seated. I believe if the answer from God, if the answer would have been wait, David would have waited. I think if the answer would have been, you need to just stay and watch the hand of the Lord, I believe that's exactly what David would have done. But he inquired of the Lord. We need to get enough confidence of the Holy Ghost that before we make any move, I don't care what kind of move it is. I'm not talking about geolocation move. Don't get any bright, any bright I'm, I know I'm gonna hear it after service. That's not what I'm talking about, but that too. Before you make any type of move in your job, before you make any type of move in a relationship, before you make any type of physical move, I'm telling you, any, anytime I make any type of large purchase, I want to hear the word of the Lord. And you know what? Sometimes God says no, and a lot of times God says wait and sometimes he very little times he says yes but I know one thing that he is not he doesn't operate on my time he is not a man to think and to operate the way that men operates he can do what would take me a decade or longer to do in just one day that's why I'm telling this church, don't be, don't be fearful, don't be anxious, don't be worried about what we need and what we have need of. It seems like the clock is just a ticket away and that man, we, we, we're not really moving forward to the pace that we wanna do. God, why aren't you doing it? I've come to remind the church of the living God of Lighthouse Church, don't worry about God's time clock. When he says it wants to be done, that's exactly when it will be done. One day we won't have it and the next day we will have it. That's how much I trust God. I'm not worrying about it. I'm just inquiring of him. What do you want us to do? He inquired of the Lord saying, shall I pursue after the troop and shall I overtake them? And he answered him, pursue for thou shalt surely overtake them and without fear without fail, recover all. Friend, when God says to pursue and to overtake and to recover, that's exactly what he means. I'm telling somebody you need to go and teach that Bible study this year. I don't care what has happened in the past. Go and teach that Bible study again. I don't know who I'm talking to, but there's somebody you've been contemplating. Should I go knock on the door? Should I go witness? Should I go reach somebody? I'm telling you, yes, yes. Yes, text them again, call them again. Tell them how much you love God. Tell them how much you love to see him come to the church. Tell them, I'm telling you, pursue, pursue, pursue. And God is about to recover all. I'm telling the church it's time for Lighthouse to pursue after souls. It's time. 
I know we're doing it. This is an incredible church. We're doing a lot of great things. But I know how the flesh operates. I know how the, how the mind begins to think. And we, we begin to want to kind of put the foot off the accelerator a little bit and just kind of chill. And I think there's probably merit for that in some cases. But I'm telling this church, it's high time for us to move forward in revival. It's time for us to move forward in revival. What God has spoken, it will come to pass in due time. I don't care what the enemy tries to say and tries to lie to us uh, it will come to pass uh, it was just only about a year ago where some of you would get up here and you began when brother Corbin was here and there began it was some great proclamations that were made of souls and hundred in the youth group and a hundred in the children and all these different things anybody remember what I'm talking about I'm telling you don't forget that pursue and what you think you have lost God is about to recover But first, we've got to get into the presence of the Lord. You've got to get into the presence of God. You know what? You could do a lot of different things. You could tuck, tuck tail and run. You could, you, could, you could go and you could just leave it. You could leave it up to somebody else. But I'm telling you, now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. Don't be discouraged and don't be dismayed. Now is the time. Some may think I'm talking about carnal things. I'm not talking about carnal things. I'm talking about the spiritual things. I can't predict when you're going to get a thousand dollars. I'm not. God hasn't spoken anything about that. I'm not talking about anything physical. I'm talking about kingdom first. It's time for us to pursue, and God will recover all. We find in verse 18 of that same chapter that we read that after David began to encourage himself in the Lord and then to inquire of the Lord. You see, we want to skip that step. We want to skip that step and get to the verse 18. We want to do it our own way and get to verse 18. We want, we want to have it in our time and skip to verse 18. But I'm telling you what, there's a process to the harvest and the process is you've got to inquire of the Lord and you've got to encourage yourself in the Lord at times. I'm going to tell you, i got to go back. i got to hit pause on verse 18 real quick and go back. I'm going to tell you what we need to do. And this is a great worshiping church. It is. For the most part, it's a great worshiping church. But I'm telling you, it is time. And I could yell and scream this and, man, have you clap it? I realize that. But it's time for us to turn the heat up just one more click. Turn up the heat just one more click. I know that we've been praying. I know we're fasting. I believe we are. But I'm telling you, it's time to pursue and to turn up one more click. I don't know. I, I don't know how many Bible studies we ended up with last year. I gotta, I gotta look at my list that I've got. I don't know if we hit our goal or not. But I'm telling you that if you didn't teach a Bible study in 2023, it's time for you to pick up a Bible study and find somebody. You need to make it your your desire. You need to make it the last thing you do, the first thing you do. God, before you give me a promotion, before you bless my home, before you give me anything give me a soul give what would happen if everybody had that level of tenacity and desire for a soul there would be absolutely no empty chairs here tonight because there would be filled with hungry soul I'm telling you don't go weary don't be uh, apathetic it's time to pursue after it let's lift up our hands let's pray He's a God of his word. Verse 18, and David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives. And there was nothing, everybody say nothing, 
lacking to them neither small nor great nor neither sons nor daughters neither spoil nor anything that they had taken to them David recovered all I'm telling somebody don't stop praying your family's coming back home uh, you're going to be able to look back and say, ah, God recovered them all. I know there's so many that share the burden that I have for the win this city and this region. That's why you do everything that you do. I'm trying to remind us tonight, I don't care what it seems like we may have lost. I believe with all of my heart, God is about to recover it all. Let's stand on our feet. I'm through. I, I want us to begin to lift up our hands and, and proclaim it. I know it may mean something different for everybody, but I believe everybody under the sound of my voice, you ought to begin to inquire of the Lord. You ought to begin to encourage yourself in the Lord. If it's all right, sister, I, I don't want any music right now. I just want prayer. I'm asking us to pray right now and seek after the face of God. I'm asking somebody to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost right now because God's speaking to you. He's speaking to your heart. He's speaking to your life. You look back in the past couple of years, it seems like maybe you've lost some things. I've come with a word of the Lord to me tonight. He's about to recover it all.